Hi everyone, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art and we're going to paint this adorable little wooden cutout gnome for Easter. And so this is your, these are your instructions um, when you purchase the kit. So you will get your little photograph and you'll have the QR code which will lead you right here to the video. So there's two sizes of this gnome but they're gonna paint, paint it exactly the same. We have the little 12 inch cutout we also have the big 18 inch which is fabulous i love him he's a, he's a good size one so the painting the same and always remember you can change the colors up I, I have colors included in the kit but you can certainly mix them up or use colors you have you don't have to paint it exactly like i'm painting mine but i'm going to show you the little techniques that i do it's pretty pretty easy on uh with these gnomes with these wood cutouts because you can see the design is etched in and that gives you really nice guidelines on where to paint so let me switch you over so you can see what I'm doing. And we're gonna paint our gnome. Thanks. Okay, so to get started, you've got the paint in your kit. We have a white and a black. We have a couple of shades of pink, green, purple, a little blue. I'll show you where these are all gonna go as we go along. But like I said, feel free to um, mix them up and use whatever shades you like and add any paints you might have. They're just acrylic paints. You can buy them at the um, hobby stores, uh, craft stores. They're the little two ounce uh, bottles. You can get the larger ones. You can use the tubed acrylics. Any acrylic paint that you have, uh, water base, you can use. I have my paper plate for a palette. Um, just a little cup of water and a few brushes. I usually have a flat and a round. And I'm going to start, I usually start sometimes top to top to bottom so that we don't put our hand in them as we're painting. But you will notice that these paints are a little translucent sometimes. So you might need two coats. So occasionally we'll jump around from color to color, letting things dry. I'm gonna start with that little pom-pom on his hat and I'm gonna just paint it white. And see how easy it is to follow those lines? And you can see how this is a little translucent. Don't worry about it, don't keep going over it. You're not gonna get a nice second coat on there until that coat dries. And then we're gonna paint the green background for his hat. And I'm going to just take, I'm using the same flat brush. I'm just gonna paint that light green. And I'm just gonna cover his hat. And these are, like I said, the same way for your big gnome, whatever size gnome you, you purchased, you can use these instructions for. And they're guidelines, certainly. I'd love to see you use your imagination. Paint them any way you want. We're going to put polka dots on his hat, but you could very easily paint flowers, stripes, little hearts, whatever your heart desires. You can paint on that uh, as a little decorative touch, or you could leave the hat plain. You don't have to have a, um, anything on there if you don't wish to. So we're just getting our first coat on. The paint dries pretty quickly. If you're a little impatient, you can always use a hair dryer to, to dry it. But I find it dries quickly enough while we're working on other things. So let's just get our base coats on. And then we can do our second coat when these are nice and dry. So there, we've got his hat. We've got the little bit of white on his pom-pom. His beard is going to be a little gray to start, and then we're gonna add white on top. It just gives a little dimension. Instead of painting his beard just all white, I'd rather start with the gray. And we're just gonna make our own gray. We're going to just take a little bit of little bit of black into some white, mix it up. Just sort of a light gray color. It doesn't have to be perfect, and I don't mix it up too much. I just take a little white and black as I'm painting. I don't mind that it's different colors. It looks a little more painterly and natural that way. And I'm carefully, just as carefully as I can, going around his nose. We can go over that with the flesh colored afterwards. Let's just paint his gray beard in. Then we'll do the flesh on his hands and on his nose. You don't have to worry too much about painting faces when you're painting these gnomes because all they have are noses. You don't have to worry about eyes and mouth or anything. Kind of fun. Now, I'm using my flat brush but you are welcome to use your little round brush if you wish to outline everything, if that makes it a little easier for you to paint him in. Certainly go right ahead and do that. 
There we are. And see how the paint is streaky and light and dark? That's perfectly fine. It works well with the beard because the beard would be a little bit shaded. So that's going to work fine for that. And when I'm done, what I do to hang these little guys is just glue the hanger on the back. You can use E6000 glue or whatever you might have. You can hang a little hanger on the back. You can also just use a little piece of ribbon or twine and, and you make a hanger with that. Anything like that would work. And we're doing some fun little projects for Easter. So if you look on the Facebook page or on you, my YouTube channel, which is Cheryl, uh, Cheryl, I'm Cheryl, Tinker's Cart Art on YouTube, you can follow me along there. And you can also see all the classes that we have put up there if you'd like to paint some other things. We paint a lot of canvases, a lot of ceramics, some wood cutouts, a little bit of everything. Feel free to follow us on Instagram or and or Facebook. All right, so we only have a little bit more of that beard to do. Okay, I think that's it. We have a little, you know what, this little tiny bit right between the bunny slippers is also part of his beard. So just put a little gray in there. And there you go. I'm going to rinse my brush off now. Do take care of your brushes. Rinse them off in your little cup of water. Dry the brush really well before we go into the next color. And you will be good to go. You want to take care of your brushes, though, because if the paint gets uh, sits in them or water sits in them, it hardens or the water gets in the ferrule and you can really ruin your brushes that way. So just give them a good rinse in between and just don't leave your paintbrush sitting on the side with paint in it. So let's take I'm going to go to my smaller round brush now and I'm going to take my flesh color. Now, if any time when you're painting, the paint feels a little too thick because it's been sitting out, you can add a few drops of water right into your paint and mix it up if it's going to give you some flow a little better for you. But if, but just if it's been sitting out and it looks feels a little dry to you, you can do that. And there's one coat there on his nose. Just these little ovals are his hands. We're going to do that with a little bit of the flesh color. Gnomes are so popular all of a sudden. I'm glad that gnomes have come back. They were popular years ago, and they're just so darn cute. Who doesn't love the little gnomes? You could do all sorts of... We have a lot of little wood cutouts that are gnomes. We have a cute one for spring with the bees and it says what does it say be kind so that's a nice spring one this is more suited to easter okay we're going to paint our sign yellow here's the trick with the yellow it's very transparent if you try to use just the paint as it is it hardly covers mix some white with your yellow and make up a little bit of a lighter shade see how much better that covers for you and I'm going to kind of paint right over my lettering because the lines are still there. We're not losing it. And it's very easy to follow those, even if we paint yellow over it when we go to do the teal color for the lettering. So give that a coat of paint. Like I said, a little bit of white mixed in with your yellow. These guys are so fun because you don't have to worry about tracing or where your lines are. These, these little etched bits are perfect. The edges are really kind of a dark brown because they're, they're the way they're cut, laser cut, and uh, you don't have to really wrap your paint around the edge either. You can just paint the top surfaces. So, All right, so there we are. One coat there. I'm going to rinse off my brush again. I'm going to go back to my little round brush. Paint the little brown uh, sign uh, post there. You'll see some of the colors, the black and the brown, will cover a little better. But like I said, we're going to go back and do a second coat on everything just to get it to cover the, a little bit better coverage. There. 
feel free, like I am doing, turn your little guy upside down, sideways, whatever you need to, to paint him. I rarely have him sitting stationary just like that for the whole process. All right, his little bunny slippers. I am going to take, we have a little, couple shades of pink. And actually, um, this pink is really just mixed your dark pink with some white. But I'm going to take, I'm going to use my um, round brush. I think it'll be a little easier to get these little ears and things. We can always switch over to our flat. So whatever brush you're comfortable with is what you'll use. Let's get a little coat of just that lighter pink on our bun, our little bun slippers. We'll shade a little bit with that darker pink afterwards. But to paint your slippers, I would take your dark pink and just mix some white with it. And that helps a little bit too with the opacity of the paint. You can always make them add as much white as you like there. I'm just going to put a little more in there so that it covers a little better. Then afterwards, we're going to put some white um, strokes on the beard to make it look like hair. See how simple it is to paint these little guys? If you have any questions at all when you're painting your kits, feel free to message me on Facebook. I can certainly help you if you're stuck or answer any questions you might have. I check my messages pretty often, so if you're stuck, shout out to me and we'll get you organized. I love the little bunny slippers. This is my favorite part of this little piece is these little bunny slippers. How, do you, how can you not love those guys, right? Okay. Okay, so now we got our first coat on and everything. Let's go back and start it to the beginning and just go over what we already had have there. Take a little more white with our flat brush again. Just get a little bit of better coverage. We'll just need that second coat on that. That's all. There. Easy peasy. And we'll go into the green. And just a quick coat on his hat. It covered pretty well, but I want to just go over everything one more time. Got a little bit of a brush hair there, so we'll just pull that out with our brush. And I kind of made a little boo-boo there. I went right into my white with my green. But the great thing about acrylics is you can fix everything. So don't worry. I'm just going to paint right over it. If you need to, you could just take a little bit of a paper towel or a clean brush with some water, and you can always wipe out any mistakes too. But you can always paint over anything you don't like. If you have a dark color, say you've finished painting it, and you're like, oh, I don't really like, want that green hat, if you really wanted to change the color and it was a lighter color you were going to, you could just simply paint the hat white and then start over again and put whatever color you like there. So don't be um, afraid to change things up if you don't like them. Get it suit, you know, suited to your, your um, taste. Okay, so there, we've got another coat on both of those pieces. When it dries, we can decide whether we need another coat of that white or not. Uh, I don't need to do a second coat on the beard because we're going to do white on little strokes on there. So let's do that now. So I'm going to go to my little round brush now. And I am adding a little water to this white paint. Since we're doing little stroke work for the beard, we want the paint to really be a little thinner, more like ink, less like paint. I'm just adding water. I'm going to start at the bottom of the beard, and we can just do a few little strokes in here behind the bunny slippers. So I'm starting at the bottom, working to the top, and the reason being, I want to, the the um, little strokes I'm doing to sort of lay like like hair would, and the way it grows would be this way. And I start and just I'm just making little strokes. I'm not covering all of the gray, and I'm just pressing down with my brush a little bit and lifting and making it look a little hairy. So that looks pretty beard-like, right? And it's very simple. It's just gray underpainting and thin down white. You can see, you can see through my strokes pretty well. It's a little translucent and, and now I really want that to happen. If you hit your bunnies or your hands, 
no worries because we're going back with the second coat. I stay away from it if I can, but if I hit that, it's not going to matter because we have another coat of all these colors to do. I might tend, and, and as I get my white paint loaded back on my brush, I add a little more water. Can you see on, on the edges, I'm kind of using a curved stroke. I'm getting a little straighter in the middle, curving to the other side. It's very translucent, and that's okay, because I can always go back with some really heavy white bits afterwards. So just work your way in rows right up to the nose. You can use thin strokes. You can use thick strokes. It doesn't matter. You can mix them up. But can you see how it's starting to really look like a beard now? Okay. All right, so we kind of went from bottom to top. I'm going to take a little more white, maybe a little heavier this time, not so watered down. And if you like, you can even make like curlier strokes, curved ones, whatever you want to make. You can make them have a crazy beard. But see how I am just going now back over with a little bit of heavier white. I'm not adding as much water. It's not as see-through. But if you can see, if we do it in this direction from the bottom to the top, the, the, the hairs lay on top of one another and look natural. So you can kind of see how I'm doing that. And just a few more here to finish it off. And you can go back as many times as you want and touch it up and add bits if you need to. It doesn't have to be too detailed, though. Okay, I think that looks good. What do you think? That looks good. Now we'll go and touch up the flesh color, and that way we can go right over any little bits that we might have hit with the white when we were doing the beard. So just another little quick coat. And again, you can use your round, uh, your round brush like I am, or you can use the flat brush if you're comfortable with that. Whatever feels, feels more comfortable for you. Okay, we're going to fill in the nose with one more coat of flesh color. Yeah. All right, and one more little hand here. And afterwards, like I said, when you're done, you can look in carefully, and if you find areas you need to touch up, that is no problem. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to put another coat of what? Um, another coat of yellow and another coat of brown there. My yellow, again, is mixed with a little white just to get it a little lighter. Better coverage that way. And you can see, even with the second coat, you can still see the writing through that. So that'll be pretty easy to paint afterwards. And I'll do that brown little stick there. Okay. Then when everything's painted with the second coat, then we can go and add the embellishments. We can do the polka dots. We can do some little liner work on the, uh, the little pom-pom. We can put our writing in. And now we'll just do a quick little coat of our pink on our slippers. Again, a little white maybe with our pink. Get whatever shade you like. I don't even mind if it's varied because that looks more natural like these little fuzzy slippers would be. What a fun project for Easter. And this will be something you can hang out every year after year. This is a great one for indoors, the little 12 inch, but you can also do that big 18 inch and hang it on your front door. It's nice and big so you can see it from the road. You could add a bow to it. It would be very cute, either this size or the big one added to a wreath, to an Easter wreath. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay, so here he is all set. Second coat of pink. A little lighter, a little darker, perfect. Okay, now we can we can have the, the fun starts. We can add the embellishments. I liked uh, purple for the little dots on his hat. Again, we're doing detail work, so what do I do? I take a little more water and add it to my paint. So I'm thinning my purple paint down a bit. I'm gonna add a little white to that paint too. I want it to be a little bit lighter shade. 
Okay, and I'm going to freehand them on. You're very welcome to take a little piece of chalk or pencil and draw your circles on if you like, but I'm just going to freehand them. I'm just going to go on and just make some circles. I am not worried about them being perfect. They're going to be a little wonky shaped, but just, um, just put some circles in there. I'm going to outline them with a little white paint afterwards to kind of make them stand out a bit. And remember, sometimes it would just be the little half of a polka dot on the edge, maybe. And now I just have to be careful. I don't put my hand in the paint when I'm resting my hand on there making the circles. So just kind of be a little careful there. You can turn them every which way if you need to to get the circles. And again, don't worry about them being perfect. These are all hand painted. That's what makes it cool, not having them perfect. And of course, yours is going to be your own. You're not going to, they're not going to look just like mine. Even if I painted him again, it would look different. So don't worry, it's not going to look just like mine. You want to put your own twist onto things. Isn't he cute with the polka dots? I like them. And when they're dry, we'll do a little bit of a white outline. Not a perfect outline, just a little something to make them pop a little bit more off the hat. Do a little half of one there, maybe. These guys are too lined up. I think I need to put a little or one in the middle just to kind of break up that. And one more over here, maybe. There, that's good. Let's put our writing in our happy Easter sign. That would be fun. I'm going to do that in the teal color. I like to use all these Easter colors. And the teal, let's see, I forgot to get the teal out. So we have a little light blue for some shading, but let's get a little teal here on our palette for our writing. And again, we're going to thin that down a little bit so that it flows into those little letters nicely. So just a little bit of water again into your paint. I can sometimes pull it aside here and get a little bit of a blob of thinned down paint. And you're just going to take your round brush and just paint inside the letters there. And you can certainly wait till this dries if you need to. I'm just being a little careful where I put my hands. But if you want to wait till that's good and dry, you're welcome to do that. Maybe I'll paint it upside down that way. I won't be putting my hand in the wet bits. There. I like the contrast. I like the teal color over the yellow. And I'm just sort of scooching the paint inside the letters there. Because they're etched in, you don't have to worry about their shapes too much. And I am going to do a second coat because I can see that yellow through a little bit. So I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to do a quick little second coat of those letters as well. I do love the acrylic paint, but it doesn't cover as well with, you know, just one coat. You need to put a few coats on there. Any little boo-boos, like I went over the edge here a little bit, that's okay. We'll just go back with the yellow and touch it up. Actually, we'll go back with white or a very light yellow and touch it up. That way, when it dries, we can put a little brighter yellow over it if we need to. And I'll show you what I mean when I fix that little spot. Okay, so there's the happy almost done. And then we're going to put the Easter in the same color. And again, if you need to, just keep adding some water. You want to keep that paint thinned down a little bit. Almost there. And 
And then we'll let it sit. We'll do a little, little bit on his little pom pom next. There we are. Get that R in there. There. Now we'll just let that dry a bit. And again, as you go, you can touch up. I have a little white spot on my stick. You mightn't see it from there, but I'm just going to take my brown and just kind of cover that up real quick. On my little pom-pom, his little pom-pom, I like to shade a little bit with light blue. It's just a little brighter and cheerier than shading it with gray. And I just want to add, I'm just going to put, they're just little um, kind of C comma strokes, kind of in the shape of the little pom-pom. I'm just going around these little edges. I'm not doing a perfect outline. I'm just putting a little of these strokes in here and there. That's all we need there. Oops, that one came out a little bit trickier. Let me just fix that one up. Okay, that's enough on his hat. And if you find that you need to add a little white, I see that the white is, um, especially on the edge, the brown's kind of showing through. I'm just going to do a little bit of bright white on the edge if I see the brown there. Okay, don't want to do my little white outlines on that quite yet because the circles are still wet. So let's go on to maybe shade a little bit on... I like to shade a little bit on his nose and hands. So we have our brown paint. If you mix it with a little white, you'll get this tan color. And we're just gonna use the tan color to shade the nose. And I'm going to shade just on the bottom here. I'm just gonna go around the edge here. I'm taking just a little bit of tan color on my round brush. I'm going to take a little bit of flesh back on just to blend it. And there, we're just going to blend that darker shade there. There. He's just got a little blend of, of dark there. And I'm going to do the same thing on his little hands. Just a little bit of tan painted across the bottom edge. Just across the bottom edges. Dry off your brush. Go back into just the flesh color and that Flesh color will blend and, and soften that edge. We just don't want that harsh edge. We're just going to soften it with a little flesh color. There. We can even do that in the top with a little white. I'm going to take a little of my white paint. I'm going to go to the top of my nose a little bit. Wipe off my brush. Go into the flesh and just soften it. See how that gives dimension to your nose? It looks rounder. It's lighter on the top and a little bit darker on the bottom. It doesn't look so flat. It look, gives it a little bit of shape. We'll do that on the hands. Just a little, you could do both. A little white. You want to do this softening before this paint dries. If you let it uh, dry and went back now, you'd still have the line. You want to have that wet paint, white paint wet and then go right in with your flesh color that we use to base coat the hands with and just soften it and you can get a little bit of a lighter spot across the top there yeah. and you can blend it as much as you need to i finish it off by taking the white and just putting a little highlight on his nose maybe something like you know something like that just to make it a little shiny we'll do the same thing on his hands there just gives him a little bit a little bit of something something that's still wet, so we're going to wait. I got a little goof, I goofed up a little bit on my beard, so let me, I'm just going to put a few more beard strokes here to cover that little goof bit, goofed up bit I had with putting my hand in there. And like I said, just as you see things, just kind of fix them if you need to. Just want to soften that. Okay. All right, we're going to work on the slippers. Those things are awful cute. We're going to make them look a little fuzzier than they, than they do here. I'm going to take our darker pink. I'm going to paint in a little bit of the inner ear. Just like that. There's no lines for that, but you can just kind of eyeball that. Just a little bit of a, um, just the inside of it, the bun's ear. Okay. He needs a little shading underneath. And now we're going to get some water on that brush and let's kind of make some raggedy strokes because he's going to look fuzzy. So let's kind of just use some, I'm just kind of dabbing the brush down. I've got the paint really thin 
We added some water, and now I'm just, for texture, I'm just dabbing that brush. So can you see we've got a darker bit underneath the neck, and now you can just go into some white, and the same thing, I'm just pouncing the brush. I'm gonna go white on the edge here. I'll get into my other pink and just dab it. And the more we dab, the fuzzier those slippers look, right? Don't they look like little fuzzy bumpy, bumpers? <laughs> little fuzzy bunny slippers. And you can go back and forth into your lights and darks and just kind of go to town. There. That looks kind of cool. We're going to do the same thing with the face. We're going to take some, let's go back right into the pink that we used. Just kind of dab it. Just a little bit of that pink right over what we did. A little bit of the white in the middle. We're just doing this for texture, but we're re-wetting the pinks so that the, the colors blend. We'll go right into the dark. And you can just go on the edge with the dark if you want, wherever you want that to go. You just want to have a little dark. And at, at this point, you can be a little messy because you want it to overextend because he looks like he's fuzzy, so you, you don't have to stay within the lines there. You can do whatever you want and just as much fuzziness as you want on him. I like to keep it dark under the chin, though, and a little lighter on top so that it looks rounded. You can see how we're lighter in the middle and we go out to the dark. Fuzzy, fuzzy slippers. His ears need a little bit of fuzz, too. So I'm just going to around the edges, going over that line a bit with any of your pinks. And when it's wet, I'm going to go with a little white, too. I'll touch up that little middles that I hit there. We're just going over the pink with some texture. A little white sometimes for to highlight it. This this ear here is on top. Let's make it lighter there. And again, you can just puff it right out over. There. Now I'm going to touch up the little insides that I kind of hit with that when I was pouncing with that brush. I'm just going back in with that same dark and just touch it, just evening those up a little bit. And now we're gonna put some eyes and noses on them. Let's make the nose the dark pink. It's like a little triangle shape. They're crazy little noses, aren't they? Okay, so we're just gonna paint in the lines there. The dark pink, it covers nice. You only need one coat. And little black eyes. Now here's a little trick to do the eyes if you'd like to make them round. Instead of trying to paint them with your um, pointed brush, you could just take the back end of that brush, just the back tip, dip it into your black, and daub it right on the eyes. So I'm just taking a little black. Sometimes it's easy to get a fresh bit of black for each eye so they stay nice and round. And when they dry, we will put some little white highlights in them. So isn't that cute? Can you see the little slippers? And we will do our lines here. And can you see I spilt some pink blobs on there, but because it was still wet, I'm just taking a wet brush and wiping them off. So that's easy enough to fix. Might need a little more of that beige. I sort of pulled that off. So let's just touch that up. Perfect. Now, we're gonna just outline our little circles here and there. We're gonna use the white paint and we're gonna thin it down again, so a little and you can always grab clean. I keep two little cups so I have some clean water if I need to, especially for using the lighter colors and the white. So I've got that clean white now. I'm adding to my water, to my paint. And I want just, and I'm not being real careful. I am just going to sort of go around these guys a little bit. Can you see I'm being, I'm not being super careful. I'm just sort of outlining them here and there. Sometimes it stops and starts. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just the half. I'm not worrying about hitting the purple right exactly on the edge. I kind of like it when it's a little bit wonkier and not perfect. There. I'm also going, oh, I got two more. Sorry, almost forgot you guys down here at the bottom. I'm going to add some on the edges too. I give them a little highlights here and there when I finish my wood cutouts. Actually, we'll go down here to the bunnies first. We'll add some highlights there. 
and on their little faces. And we'll do the eyes after because they're still wet. A little, like little comma strokes on the edges of things. And on the hat, same thing. I'm going to just outline it a little bit. Yeah, that's a little something. And now let's do a second coat on that writing. It'll pop a little better when it's a little brighter. Looks a little green there because the yellow underneath. Let's go right back into our teal color. And if we need to, add a little bit of water, but this looks like it's a pretty good consistency. And as many coats as you need. So you may need another coat. This is actually covering pretty good, but you just look at yours and see what you think you need. And then I'll show you how to touch up in little bits if you go out of the lines. That's better coverage, doesn't it? Look a little better. It's getting a little better. All right. So there's that. And if you have any little mistakes, I'll show you what to do. If you have a little bit of area where, you know, you might have gone over, overshot the paint, take a little white. Just touch up. You know, it could be white or it could be that very light yellow. And you could just touch it up. If it's a little too light, when you go back with the, Brighter yellow, it will cover much better than trying to cover it with just the plain yellow. Just do it a little lighter to begin with and then go back with your brighter. And that kind of blends in pretty well. You could add little polka dots to your sign. You could do all sorts of things. I do do a little bit of an outline. I'm going to take some of my brown. I'll tie the color of the stick in. And I'm just going to just give it a little, some little curvy edges. And then a little, you know what, actually I'm going to put a few on the top and bottom just to kind of edge that a little bit. Doesn't have to be much. And we're going to do the same thing with white. I do see a little place where I drag my teal color out there. So a little touch up real quick. And then we'll get some white. And it's just here and there. Adds a little bit of something. So what do you think? How easy is that? There's your little gnome all painted. So the little dots. You can see they're not perfect. The happy Easter. Your cute little bunny slippers. And you could paint the big guy, like I said, exactly like this. Pretty cute, right? I would love it if you guys, when you finish painting your gnomes, if you would show it, um, show me some pictures. So post them on the Facebook page of your finished gnomes and watch that we have um, lots of kits all the time. So if you would like just the kit with the paint and the brushes, it makes it easier for you than a little instructional video. Um, keep an eye out. We'll have all sorts of different seasonal and holiday pieces available for you. So thanks for watching and have fun painting. We'll see you soon.